The room was dark, except for the flickering candles that were placed around the table. Five teenagers were all gathered around a Ouija board in the dark room. They were all excited and a little scared. They had heard stories about how they could use it to connect to the dead, and they were determined to try it out for themselves. Being together as a group, they felt more confident that they could handle anything that came up. The idea of a Ouija board is a strange, mysterious thing. It was made up of a flat board with letters with numbers printed on it, along with a small planchette that was used to spell out messages. The idea is that the spirits of the dead would use the planchette to spell out messages to those using the board. There was a psychological factor that affects the movement of the planchette, though, as humans expect a ghost to move it, but they end up inadvertently moving it as a group. It was just a silly game of fun, but there have been cases of people actually contacting something otherworldly. The teenagers understood the rules before they began. They knew they had to be respectful and serious, and they had to keep their hands on the planchette at all times. They also understood that they should not ask about the future, as it could be dangerous. I don't really understand that one, but that is what some group understood to be an unofficial rule of the Ouija board rules of the road. They all got into position, surrounding the board, sitting on a table, and placed their hands on the planchette. They began the process by asking if anybody was there. The planchette moved slowly at first, but then it began to pick up speed. The teenagers watched in amazement as it spelled out a name, Sarah. One of the teenagers was named Sarah as well. They all looked at her and laughed. Oh no, Sarah, you're dead. She laughed in an awkward way, but was a little disturbed. The ghost happened to have her name. They asked Sarah if she was a ghost and the planchette moved to the word, yes. They asked her how she died, and the planchette spelled out the word, drowning. The teenagers were all a little spooked, but they were also excited. They were talking to a real ghost. As they continued to ask questions, they learned more about Sarah. She had been a teenager, just like them. She had drowned in a nearby lake several years ago. She had been trying to save her little sister, who had fallen in the water, but got caught in a current and couldn't make it back to shore. The teenagers were all silent as they listened to Sarah's story. They felt a sense of sadness and reverence for her, and they promised to always remember her. They ended the session by saying goodbye and thanking Sarah for talking to them. But as they went to put the board away, something strange happened. The planchette began moving on its own spelling out words that none of them had asked for. The words were jumbled and confusing, but they seemed to be telling a story of their own. Planchet spelled out, I killed Sarah, and I'm going to kill you next. The teenagers were all terrified now. They had heard stories about Ouija boards attracting the wrong spirits, and they didn't want to experience that for themselves. This spirit must have been responsible for the death of Sarah and her sister. Suddenly, the candles flickered and went out. The room was plunged into darkness, and the teenagers could hear strange noises all around them. They huddled together in fear, not sure what was happening. But then, just suddenly, everything went quiet. The candles flickered back to life, and the planchette was still. The teenagers looked at each other, unsure of what to do next. Finally, one of them spoke up. We should probably put this away, she said. I don't think we should mess with it anymore. The others agreed, and they quickly put the Ouija board back in its box. They felt relieved to be done with it, but they also couldn't shake the feeling that something was now not right, and they have done something wrong. Over the next few days, strange things started happening to each of the teenagers. They heard footsteps in the hallway at night when they were trying to sleep, and they would see movement in their rooms in the form of shadows that did not belong to anything. They would see the shadow out of the corner of their eye, and when they turned to fully see it, it would blend in with other shadows. Things would fall constantly in their houses during the night as well. A few days later, they all got together for the first time since using the board and contacting the spirits. They all talked about experiencing the same thing during the nights. They all agreed that they should never mess with the Ouija board again, no matter how curious they are. They all looked around and figured out that they were missing someone. Sarah. Where was Sarah? Come to find out, no one had talked to Sarah since that night. They tried to call her, 
there was no answer. They went to her house and noticed water coming out of the front door and windows. They struggled to open the door and finally got it open. Water rushed out quickly as well as three bodies. Sarah, her mother, and her father were all dead. After the investigation was complete, the conclusion was that the water in the sink in the bathtub was turned on by someone, flooded the house, then was electrified when water reached the outlets. When each of the family members made contact with the water, they were dead instantly. The paranormal activity stopped after that, and the friends all mourned the loss of a good friend. Mess with Ouija boards at your own risk. They can be a gateway for something you don't want. As soon as Lily and her friends stepped into a dimly lit room, they could feel the air become thick and heavy. In the center of the room, on top of a wooden table, sat a peculiar looking board with letters, numbers, and symbols on it. Lily had never seen a Ouija board before, but she had heard enough about it to know it wasn't a toy. Her friends, on the other hand, seemed excited and eager to try it out. What do you think, Lily? asked Mia. Do you want to play with us? Lily hesitated. She didn't believe in ghosts or spirits, but something about the Ouija board made her feel uneasy. However, she didn't want to be the only one to back out, so she reluctantly agreed. The four of them sat around the table, with their fingers resting lightly on the planchette. They closed their eyes and concentrated, trying to clear their minds of distractions and concentrate on the task at hand. Is anyone there? asked Mia her voice barely above a whisper. For a moment, there was only silence. Then, to Lily's horror, the planchette began to move while her hands were on it. Hello, it spilled out and answered to Mia's question. Lily's heart skipped a beat. Had one of her friends moved the planchette without her realizing it? She looked around the table, but everyone's eyes were closed and their fingers were still on the wood. Who are you? asked Nick, Lily's boyfriend. Again, the planchette moved on its own accord, spelling out a name that none of them recognized. What do you want? Lily found herself asking, even though she knew it was a mistake. The planchette moved again, spelling out a message that sent shivers down Lily's spine. I want to speak to Lily. Lily's friends looked at her in surprise. Why you? asked Mia. I don't know, said Lily, feeling a sense of unease settle over her. Maybe it's just a coincidence. But as the minutes ticked by, Lily couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. The planchette continued to spell out messages, some of them innocuous, and others that made her blood run cold. It knows things, Lily whispered to her friends. Things that only I would know. Things about my family. Things that I've never told anybody. Her friends exchanged worried glances, but they could tell that Lily was starting to get spooked and they didn't blame her. They were starting to feel uneasy themselves. Maybe we should stop, suggested Mia. This isn't fun anymore. But the planchette continued to move, spelling out more and more messages, until it finally came to rest on a single sentence that escalated the situation greatly. William is dead, and you are next. The four friends jumped back from the table, as they had been burned. They could feel a cold wind blowing through the room, even though the windows were closed. What was that? asked Nick, his voice shaking. Lily didn't know how to answer. She had never believed in ghosts or spirits, but now she wasn't so sure. The Ouija board had tapped into something she couldn't explain, and it had left her feeling unsettled. She quickly called her husband, William, to make sure he was okay. Fortunately, he answered the phone and let her know he was fine. Lily left the party and drove home to see her husband. When she got there, she realized that something was wrong. The door was open, having been kicked in. It was a home invasion. The house was trash. She ran to her bedroom to find William. She did find him, unfortunately. He was gone. He had been attacked, and he was lying cold. But how did this happen? 
she just talked to him. Suddenly, Lily heard someone coming quickly behind her. As the sun set on a quiet autumn evening, four friends gathered in a dimly lit room. They were eager to try out the Ouija board they had purchased earlier that day. The board was a dark wood and had the letters of the alphabet inscribed on it along with the numbers and a few common words such as yes, no, and goodbye. When they bought the Ouija board, the friends were warned by the store clerk that Ouija boards are not to be taken lightly and they should be careful with the spirits they might invite. The group laughed it off and started to set up the board at a small table. The youngest of the group, Julie, seemed a bit uneasy about playing with the board. She had heard stories about people being possessed by demons or encountering malevolent spirits. However, her friends convinced her that it was just a game and that they would be in control of the spirits. As they placed their hand on the planchette, they began to ask questions. At first, the answers were simple and seemed to be random letters or numbers. As they continued to ask more questions, the answers became more specific and sometimes downright eerie. The group asked who was communicating with them, and the planchette spelled out the name, Samuel. They asked Samuel if he was a good spirit, and the planchette moved to, yes. They asked more questions, and Samuel revealed that he had been a soldier during the American Civil War, and had died in battle. The group became more engrossed in the conversation with Samuel, and started to ask more personal questions. Suddenly, the planchette started moving rapidly, and the group realized that they had lost control of the board. The room became cold and dark, and the group felt a presence in the room that wasn't there before. They heard strange noises and whispers that seemed to be coming from all directions. Julie started to cry, begging the others to stop the game. The planchette continued to move, on its own now. Suddenly, the board flew off the table and the planchette shattered into several pieces. The room had become silent, and the group was too afraid to speak. They quickly gathered their belongings and left the room, vowing never to play with Ouija boards again. Days turned to weeks, and during that time, the group noticed strange occurrences around them. Julie claimed that she saw a dark figure lurking outside of her window at night. Another friend reported that he had nightmares about demons and spirits. The group realized that they had opened a portal to the other side, but now they were being haunted by the spirits that they had summoned. They tried everything they could to rid themselves of the spirits, but nothing seemed to work. They sought the help of a psychic medium who performed a cleansing ritual on all the friends. After that, the spirits seemed to have gone. The group was forever changed by the encounter with the Ouija board. They realized that they had taken something very powerful for granted and had paid the price for it. Years later, the group decided to revisit the old room where they had played the Ouija board. They found the room empty, but they could still feel a presence there. They decided to perform another cleansing ritual and made peace with the spirits that they had summoned. They realized that a Ouija board is not just a game, but a powerful tool to connect us to the other side. It isn't something to be taken lightly, but something to be respected and used with great care. From that day on, they vowed never to play with the Ouija board again, and they would always remember the lesson that they had learned. If you're at Walmart and you see a Ouija board, don't get it. Get Monopoly instead. Five teenagers were gathered around a... It was made up of a flat board with letters. It was made up of a... Uh... They would see a shadow out of the... They would see... They would see... A few... Moments later... As soon as Lily and her friends... As soon as Lily and... Uh, as soon as Lily... Lily... Set up... Set up a peculiar... A peculiar... Lily had never seen a Ouija, seen a Ouija, then to Lily, but, but Lily, Lily's heart, Lily's, Lily's heart, Lily, spelling out a name that none of them, re, 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 oh, what the fuck, <laughs> uh, Lily's, no, 
Okay, well, Nick is not Lily's boyfriend. Alright, because William's her husband. A group of friends were warned by the store clerk who performed a cleansing. 